Mar uh, sorry, Dr. Maureen Faruqi. Thank you, Mr. President. What? On Monday night, a courageous group of young students from universities across Sydney stood up on the popular political TV show Q&A and made their voices heard. They chanted slogans and dropped a banner concerning the increasing corporatization of our tertiary education system. They were promptly ejected from the premises, but not before capturing national attention and sparking a fierce public debate about demonstrations and the Education Minister's proposed reforms. People have, been, people have been very divided on the appropriateness of this action, even people who firmly agreed with the protesters' message. To those who question the tactics of the activists, I ask, what else were they to do? As one of the protesters wrote in an opinion piece for New Matilda, non-violent direct actions like ours on Q&A are what we are forced to do. Nothing else was working. Students have been speaking out, but nobody is listening. Because we are young and we don't have money, political connections or seats in Parliament. On the same night, I attended a community meeting in the northwest of Sydney on the Northwest Rail Link. Like stage-managed political TV shows such as Q&A, government-organized community forums are often public relations exercises for powerful people to manage public dissent and give the impression of meaningful consultation. This particular forum, however, was organized by a community group, the Beecroft Cheltenham Civic Trust, which sought to have a genuine debate. The local liberal member was grilled by residents who, I admit, were angry and very vocal. People were frustrated, particularly since at a late stage in the decision-making process, there is a sense of futility. This is why, after I spoke on behalf of the Greens, the question was finally put to me. Where to next? Do we need to engage in nonviolent direct action? I couldn't lie. I got involved in politics because I wanted to give marginalized and ignored people and the environment a voice. A core part of the Greens' mission is to champion the voices of the silence, to dissent on behalf of the dissenters. The numbers of the silenced are growing, though. More and more people are feeling shut out of the decision-making process, and something has to change. Every day, we see more news reports about the amounts of money that big business is willing to pay to get in the ear of powerful decision-makers. Makers. Both the major parties are guilty of being complicit in this toxic process. Every new revelation about the corporate political complex, whether inside or outside of the ICAC, further undermines faith in our system and in our leaders. The Greens New South Wales proudly do not accept corporate donations. We believe in grassroots democracy where the voices of ordinary people, not the profits of corporations, drive political agenda. The cynics will say that representative democracy is the only viable and efficient system, that every three or four years we all get the chance to vote for our preferred local representative or even run for parliament, and we should be thankful for that. Yes, we should be thankful for that, but we should also demand more. We should demand public participation in all stages of the decision-making processes. The government should be asking students what they think before we overhaul the education system, just as it should be asking residents for their views on one of the most expensive infrastructure projects in Australia, the Northwest Rail Link. And this information should influence the outcome. Of course, we aren't going to agree all the time on everything. And involving more people in decision making may make the process a little longer and more challenging. But collective decision making, especially when it is deliberative, results in informed choices, better outcomes, and in the public interest. I know this all too well. My party famously, or perhaps infamously, operates on the basis of consensus decision making. Things sometimes take a little while to be decided in meetings of the local groups and at statewide level. But people come to the table to debate in good faith and with respect for each other. Things are resolved and outcomes are improved. After 30 years of being around, in one form or another, the Greens in New South Wales remain a popular and successful political movement. As direct action continues at the Laird Forest and the Pilliga, 
a blockade is swelling at Bentley, and the march in May rapidly approaches. I know that a participatory system can work, and people across our state are calling for it with louder voices than ever before.